Good day, my name is Todd Stanley, and thank you for tuning in to my show today. It's Sasquatch Sunday, and I'm going to go into something that a lot of people have been talking to me about, and I, I don't think people are really getting it and understanding. The level of dominance I've experienced when out doing Sasquatch research. It's hard to believe how, how significantly I've been dominated. And just as an example, what we're going to talk about today is video two, where people have told me, so video two is where you see a Sasquatch stand up and, and squat back or crunch back down. And many people have told me, well, that would have been the perfect opportunity for you to shoot one. If I'd have shot that Sasquatch, I wouldn't be here right now. And my colleagues who were there that day wouldn't be here right now. We would have not survived that. And I can absolutely prove that to you today by going through the whole scenario. No, not the whole scenario. The whole scenario about everything that happened, the time, the planning, what happened that day, what happened after, all the things that happened. That's a, It's actually a 120-minute documentary. Just to see what happened on that one day, the preparation, the timing, and everything that we had to do. The weather had to be perfect. The wind had to be moving in the right direction. Everything fell into place, and we failed dozens of times before we had this tremendous success. So... Just going into everything would be way too much. I'm going to go into the superficial microcosm of the moment and skip most of the details. I'm just going to get into the meat of it. We're going to do all that today. And I'm going to blow your mind with how spectacular and amazing Sasquatch really are. All the truth, behind, all the truth top to bottom for video two. Let's do it today, right here, right now. For the past 10 years, I've been conducting expeditions, documenting chronicles, and interviewing people pertaining to the subject of Sasquatch. With over 20 years worth of hardcore backcountry expedition experience into the most remote regions, I've tracked and studied various North American species that have had little to no exposure to civilization. I've been able to see for the first time some complete segments of Todd Standing's filming of Sasquatch, and uh, I'm firmly convinced that he has filmed Sasquatches and that he has, what he has portrayed in his documentary are indeed very close portraits, in fact, of the Sasquatch face. Here's a little bit of the backstory. So let's get into this. So uh, I have a, a biologist from Great Falls, Montana, that has all this incredible knowledge and understanding of how Sasquatch have day watchers and, and do certain things. He's been mentoring me. I'm actually not at all convinced Sasquatch are real. I still think there's a... Uh, I still have another theory. My theory was that the natives were making, the, the natives that make beautiful headdresses and, and uh, moccasins and pants, they were just making this incredible apparatus that looked like a Sasquatch and scaring people. On this day, that paradigm shifted when I got this piece of footage. Now, it was, it was Trevor and my biologist friend who had set up everything and made all the preparations and I was basically the camera guy. I was the skeptic. <laughs> which is what most of my expeditioners are and how I can really relate to people like John Bernagel, Jeff Meldrum, and Survivor Man when they come out with me. I understand the skepticism because I was there. So uh, we had seen this particular female Sasquatch, and this is in the United States, by the way, video two and video three. These are Americano Sasquatch, absolutely. So uh, what we had seen through high-powered binoculars was a female, and that's who we were gonna go get the shot of. And what the plan was is as she leaves her day watching spot, we were gonna cut her off from going back to the, to the main group. And what we didn't know at the time was when a day watcher becomes aware of you, the group goes back to her. That's what a, that's what a family unit, that's what a, 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 a devoted tribe group, whatever troop you wanna call them, does. So she, was, she couldn't leave without us getting footage of her, so she was, she was blocked. And also, I didn't, she was going to have to like jump across a cliff and to get out of there was going to be absolute hell. Something I didn't think, well, I was certain a human being couldn't do, which is part of the reason I was so convinced that that, that was a real Sasquatch. But anyways, what you're seeing is when he stands up like he does, he's letting what, I, what I'm convinced is happening, he's letting that female go by and then he goes down and follows her out because this is a, a teenage female and what you're seeing is a, at least a black back, a big, large, dominant male. I mean, this guy is easily nine feet tall. When I went up there and stood in the spot where he was, I'll never forget. So I was the one that took the, the footage, took the, sh the, the video shot. And so I went up there with the camera that I had, uh, a different camera, and uh, it was Trevor that stayed down below. And when I got up there, I was trying to stand in the spot where the Sasquatch was because all I could see was the rock was up to my 
to, you know, like up just, just, uh, just below my shoulder. And I knew that I could almost see the Sasquatch's glutes, his butt. And I thought, where the heck was he standing? Because I'm standing here and this is like, whatever was there was enormous. And I remember Trevor yelling up to me, you're in exactly the spot he was standing. And I'm going, so that was nine, over nine feet tall. And he goes, yeah, and you look like a pipsqueak up there. That thing was double, triple maybe, the width of you. So it looked like a little nothing. We had a photograph of that, but it just got lost over the years. Remember that I filmed this way back in 2005, maybe even 2004, that's a long time ago. And I'm actually really happy to be doing this. I'm not at home right now. I'm out uh, in a different city from where I live. And uh, I'm just gonna go by memory based on what I can remember to the best of my ability and not go into my notes right now. I have the, uh, I call them the Sasquatch, uh, the Sylvanic Chronicles. And I'm gonna start giving that out to donators right away. But in the meantime, it'd be interesting to compare what I remember now after well over a decade uh, from, from what my notes are specifically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna map it all out and show you what happened Indian style, which is old Indian, old Native American style. I'm gonna brush it on the dirt and show you the, the situations where I was, where the Sasquatch was and what happened to the best of my Ability and recollection so you can understand how I could not have shot that Sasquatch because I would have died and my crew would have died. So let's get into that. Okay, here's my overlay map. This is up here. This is the day watcher female. This is the male you see in video two. This is represented by the two human beings, myself and Trevor. This is something else that is not readily discussed. So let's talk about what happened. So. We got into this position and this Sasquatch came, so this is this over here, this is a cliff area and down here is a river. This, this individual, I'm quite convinced, came to this spot from across over here. He jumped across this cliff and came here. This is the female that we were trying to film and she came through here and what you see is she's down, I have her like that, she's crawling through here, he stands up and she goes past, and then he comes down. So that's what you're seeing in the video. I'm right here with my colleague Trevor, and what is not readily known is this right here. Down and below us, I believe there was another Sasquatch there. And what happened was, as he stood up, this individual stood up. Trevor and I turned around because down by the river here, we heard a giant rock crack and it got our attention. So as he stood up, we heard a giant clack rock and this rock broke in half and had dirt on it. And when we looked this way, we looked back up and these two individuals exited in the most impossible way you could ever imagine going across this cliff. So I went up there and looked around, saw tracks, couldn't believe how large the Sasquatch was. And then I walked over here and realized that no man could do this. This is a whole other story right here about how these Sasquatch crossed here. So I'm up here going, what in the heck? So I come back down where Trevor is. Trevor had gone over here and now Trevor had, actually, Trevor had seen something black come this way. And he talked about that uh, later that day. He saw something black moving over there, but that's not what was interesting. What was interesting is here, there, there was a rock that, you know how, imagine, so a rock gets, let's say this is a, see this rock in the ground? If you pull that out, what's gonna happen is, the rock is half dirty, half clean, and I can tell it fits back in there. There was a rock that, was th that had dirt on it, that fit in here, had th been thrown down here exactly when we heard the Sas when we saw the Sasquatch stand up over there. So, in reality, what was happening was, there was a Sasquatch over behind us, flanking us on our right hand side with a giant boulder in our hand. If I had drawn a gun on the Sasquatch you see in video two, the Sasquatch that was over to my right that had a giant boulder in his hand probably would have ended my life or Trevor's life or more likely even both of us. He had us flanked, he had the wind gauge, he had total control over us. So when people tell me, oh hey, why didn't you just shoot him? If I'd have shot him, 
Trevor and I would be dead. We wouldn't have survived. And there might have even been two Sasquatches. There might have been a Sasquatch somewhere else. The only reason we knew that that Sasquatch had been there is because we saw that a rock had been ripped out of the ground and that rock was freshly thrown and we heard the clack down in the river. So when you go down the river and you see a rock there that's got dirt all over it and you take that rock back up to the area and it fits in the hole 20 yards from where you were standing and now there's Sasquatch tracks on the ground there and Trevor saw a dark figure moving over there after I, while I was going up there to look where, we'd, where that Sasquatch in video two was, was standing up. Do you understand the intricacies involved in that? Do you understand we are, we are human beings, we are intelligent, we had a, a design and a plan. The plan was not to film that big Sasquatch, it was to film that female. So when I came back with video two, that was not the design. And that's what happens almost every time I get Sasquatch footage. I try to do something else, I have another plan. The only one that ever really worked out for me is video five Jake footage. So that was the plan for me to go in there, get that shot, get that footage of that Sasquatch who was there that day. So not even really aiming for a particular individual, just whatever Sasquatch was in that day watcher position. And that's really, and even that day, so much, there was so much other planning and so many things that went wrong. But of course, obviously more things that went right because I, I did, up getting, did end up getting some of the best footage I've ever got in my whole life, which I'm very, very proud of. So I always keep that in, immensely in mind whenever I'm around a Sasquatch, because more than half the time I walk away from an encounter with evidence to substantiate that individuals were around me. It happened in Nordegg on Survivor Man. Multiple individuals come around us. It happened with Jeff Meldrum when he had his eyewitness accounting. There was Sasquatch over there and over there, and you could hear them in the bush. So even on days, on other times where, as an example, I got video three and I was only aware of the one Sasquatch, you better, you better be vividly aware that there must have been more Sasquatch around there. They're, they were aware, they were around me, they were probably flanking me, wind gauging me, had every higher ground peace opportunity. They always do these things. In fact, the greatest success I get is when I give them high ground and, I, I, and I'm in an open area. I give them full tactical advantage and then they come around. That's when I get the best results on expeditions. So, and, and for people that, that say stuff like, well, why can't you have a gun? Sasquatch don't know what a gun are. What the hell are you talking about? I, I work with, with snipers that are expert snipers from South Africa, some of the best snipers in the world because of the animals they have to deal with. And they'll tell you baboons, which are not hominid intelligent. Baboons can tell the difference between a play gun and a real gun because real guns, real rifles, shoot them and kill them. Baboons are pests in South Africa. And this sniper that I work with, has he, he'll sit down and tell you about how brilliant. And baboons will see you 100 yards out with a rifle and disappear. They'll see you 100 yards out with a little play gun. They don't care. They know the difference. And you better understand Sasquatch, sea hunters, they watch people moving around hiking. They know what, I, based on even recent evidence, where Kubota evaded bear spray by rolling off of, by moving in the correct direction when the bear spray was sprayed to keep it so the wind blew it away from him, it doesn't even surprise me. It doesn't. I, every time I go out, even, even you have to understand that there's, there's all these networks that are always chasing me around to, to do Bigfoot shows and they want me to write a, a dialogue for it. And my answer is always, I'll go write a dialogue and I'll plan to do something, but the masters of the wilderness, which is who Sasquatch are, they're going to write the story. And fortunately, they're so brilliant, they're so entertaining that they'll do things I could never have thought of. It, and it always turns out that way. When I have a, something happen, some kind of encounter, I always come back on expedition or with Survivor Men and I just, I just smile and go, you see how they own you? They just own you like you never have any idea. And, and how many times have I, have I caught evidence of them just being around? Like uh, the, the footprints that we saw when I was in Nordegg, somebody saw a dark figure 150 yards away. We went there and we saw these indentations of a Sasquatch that had been standing there probably staring at us day in and day out for maybe two or three days that we were there just staring at us. And you could see in the spot where he was in that position because where his feet are, you could put your feet in that spot. And when you were there and you propped up to be, let's say nine feet tall, you had this perfect vantage point where literally his eyes would have just seen through the trees and had a perfect view of us and we never would have seen him in a million years. And, and, and that's what they do. This is, trees are, are blankets of protection. They don't like open spaces. They evade easily. They, 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 have, they have, we are afraid to go into the bush and afraid to go into nature and we fear that stuff. And that's their blanket, that's their safety net. That's how they, that's how they survive and, and evade so easily. And it, it just makes so much sense to me. And, and when I hear these preposterous little 
tidbits of, oh, you should have shot him. Oh, you could have shot him that day. Oh, this could have happened. Oh, you could have hit him with a trank dart. Let me see. I tell you something, if I would have hit that Sasquatch with it, let's, let's say there was no other Sasquatch around and I had a perfect, the perfect ability to, to gently shoot one with a trank dart. First of all, I have no idea. I would have been there to, to shoot a trank dart at a female that was probably around 600 pounds. So if I had shot that trank dart at a male who was over 900 pounds, your trank dart is worthless. But let's say even, okay, I'm, I'm there, and the miracle of I have a trank dart set for three, I have a trank dart set for 900 pounds. And I shoot the Sasquatch, and I hit him with a 900 pound, uh, perfect trank dart that puts him to sleep. You know where he was? He was at altitude in the mountains. Do you know what's gonna happen when he tries to leave? He's gonna, he's gonna get knocked out and roll down the mountain and die. And then, let's say even more impossibly, because I have to do this, because people are always like, do this, do that, do this. If, if, if the trank dart works, I hit him and I get everything and the weight and the metabolism and everything and I don't harm him and he goes to sleep perfectly, do you understand that there's a troop of Sasquatch out there and they're a family, they're a group, they stay together. So now when the Sasquatch goes down and he's sleeping, and he's unconscious, and he's lying on the ground looking like he's dead, what do you tell the other Sasquatch that come around to defend him? Oh, he's just sleeping? No, they're going to they're gonna think you killed him, they're going to think you shot him, and now you're in deep trouble because they're probably going to kill you. It's, it's, it's the likeness of tranquilize a grizzly bear cub, and what do you do when the mom comes back? Trank her too? No, you're going to have to shoot her. She's going to defend that cub violently. And, that's, and, it's, and imagine it's not a grizzly bear, it's a group of grizzly bears which doesn't exist. So let's say there's 10 bears living together. Like Now 10 bears, the auntie, the uncle, the, the brother, the sister are all going to come attack you. Now what do you do? So that's the reality of how preposterous it is to try to eat, to shoot one, to tranquilize one, the difficulties. Believe me, I explore all these possibilities. They, they really matter to me. And the whole frivolous theory and all the preposterousness of all these, you know, trank one, shoot one, do this, it doesn't work, guys. It's not gonna work. So we cannot make this discovery that way. We cannot do it even to, to remain ethical and, and do things that are appropriate. It, it can't be done that way. This is. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your ideas down below, but uh, you know, try try to keep in mind the difference between theory and practice, and it's it's a huge difference. So, uh, thank you very much for tuning into my Sasquatch Sunday videos. For the next couple weeks, I'll still be doing Wednesday Live until I go on expeditions, and I'll be doing Throwback Thursdays only for a couple more weeks, and then it'll be I'll be doing videos about me being out on expeditions with people. I'll bring them back and and put them up on YouTube. So. Really excited about this year. Uh, the new footage will be coming out soon, and uh, hopefully we'll get new footage this year. I'm very excited about all the new expeditions coming out. Thank you very much for your time. Stay tuned for more amazing, incredible Sasquatch content. Take care of yourselves.